Shalom. First off, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, your name Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shah, who the world evenly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Rakakwadashu, which is the Holy Spirit that comforts and guides us, especially knowing these perilous times to come. I also want to give a double honor to our apostles and elders, a great millstone who teach and rule well with truth and sincerity, and peace and salutations to the elect. These internet epistles. And us being out there on them highways and the byways is more so geared towards the Lord's chosen people, which are the Israelites today, consisting of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Israelite foreigners that may look like heathen, but are not heathen because their father's sea line traces back to one of the 12 progenitors of the 12 tribes of Israel that's written in my bio. And even more so than that, it's geared towards the elect out of the nation of Israel, which is the small remnant, the ones that's going to repent, ultimately turn back, and seek the Lord before all hell breaks loose. To the spirit, the topic of this lesson is going to be why she left you. Because people got to understand that everything is in the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahushah. That's from the time you woke up, the amount of hairs in your head, the amount of breaths you breathe, everything. And I mean everything. So a person... Or a man might be upset because he, a woman left him. Or a woman might be upset that a man left her. But like I said, you got to keep that in mind that everything is in the will of the Lord. And like it says in Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, it says, Fear the Most High and keep his commandments. That's the whole duty of man. So being in this ministry, the ones that's truly serving the Lord, the ones that's looking for salvation, you got to, Keep in mind that your main focus is supposed to be fearing the most high and keeping his commandments, basically serving the Lord to the best of your ability. And we understand in this truth that a lot of people aren't going to be down with the, the words that we preach, which is the gospel, the good news, the truth. Like it says in Galatians 4 and 16, Apostle Paul said, Have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? And ultimately, even some of our loved ones may become our enemies because they can't receive the 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 the, the, the bitter part of the scriptures. They can't even receive the sweet part that we consider sweet as far as in knowing that we're the Lord's chosen people, the Israelites. They believe that salvation is for all nations. They can't take that it's only for the elect out of the nation of Israel. And the rest of Israel will be saved ultimately in the kingdom because they're not going to receive it. But like I said, back to the point that a person might be upset that a woman might have left them or a man might have left them. But everything is in the will of the Lord. And you just got to hope that all those situations, all these situations that come to pass in this lifetime for you is for your benefit towards salvation. Proverbs 20 and 24 says, man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? And it says man's going, but that includes women as well. And it says, how can a man then understand his own way? Because you can have your mindset to believe that you're going to do something for from us on a certain day, but the Lord can allow a spirit to hop on another person, whether it be you in traffic and they cut you off. And now you, now you got to, now your day is all, you starting off irritated, but you was having a so-called good morning. But then you got to understand that that person cutting you off in traffic could have been ultimately to slow you down from being in a, a position or a place at a certain time that could have led to your destruction. That's why it says that, roughly paraphrasing, that the just ultimately looks for the good. So all th the just, all things are good. And to the wicked, all things are evil, roughly paraphrasing. But like I said, that includes your woman or your man. One day you just wake up and they decide to, to leave you. You think everything is going good and well. And ultimately, the spirit hops on them to leave. 
because ultimately that was the will of the Lord. And as far as in the man and this truth, as we read the scriptures, we understand that for the most part, being in a relationship can be ultimately a, a distraction from doing this work. Because ultimately we're in a spiritual war fighting against our biggest enemy, which is the so-called white man whose forefathers Esau eat him. This is his kingdom. And since we're in captivity, to be honest, a lot of these women in Babylon is ultimately his women. Like it says in 1 Timothy 5 and 15, many have turned aside to Satan. And Satan tries to ultimately cater to the flesh. And a lot of these women, they're in their emotions. So they know that they know who's in power. So ultimately they in the spirit are going to try to conform to his ways. And in this truth, we understand that we're so into more towards the spirit. And ultimately the spirit is contrary to pleasing the flesh. So it's going to be a constant battle, especially, like I said, if you're in this truth and you're dealing with a woman who can't see it, ultimately they don't have the spirit to see it. First Corinthians seven and I'm going to start at the top. It says now concerning these, the things where of you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman because Apostle Paul was basically saying it's good for a man to not touch a woman because like he's going to go into it, that ultimately it's going to cause you to have troubles in the flesh. I'm going to jump down to verse 6. It says, but I speak this by permission and not of commandment. For I would that all men were even as I myself, because Apostle Paul didn't deal with women. But every man have his proper gift of the Most High, one after this manner and another after that. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them to, if they are bad, as even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. So he's basically saying if you can if you can um, keep from dealing with or having a relationship, dealing with a woman or whatever, or a woman dealing with a man, staying single, basically, it's better off. But if you can't, then it's better to marry than to burn. It says, and unto the Murray, I command you not, I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But if she depart, let her remain unmarried for be, or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother have a wife that believe not, and she please be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. So he's saying, you know, if you have an unbelieving wife, but she pleased to dwell with you, then don't put her away. And that cuts that doctrine in IUIC when they states that if your woman doesn't believe, I think they say within six months, ultimately you're supposed to, you got to get rid of her. Or I think they tell, and I think they also tell the woman that if the, if she, she had to leave her man, her unbelieving man, and get with a man that's in the truth. That cuts that. Verse 12 said, But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother have a wife that believe not, and she pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And a woman which have a husband that believe not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they unholy. But this is the point of the lesson. Verse 15. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases. But the Most High have called us to peace. So it's saying that the Lord has called you to peace. Especially if you have a woman that's a complete demon. <laughs> but sometimes you decide to, you know, you have to have to put them away, especially if they're hindering you from serving the Lord. You trying to study. They, they they causing a the ruckus. You trying to get the camp and they making it 
like pulling teeth just to just to just to head to the camp. When it gets like to that point, then okay, yeah, you gotta cut them off. But if they're unbelieving, but they're but they they're okay to dwell with, you know, it's not it's not hindering you from doing this truth. Then you just gotta continue to do the work. But it's another point in here. I'm going to jump down to verse 32. It says, but I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried care for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. Because, yeah, if you're unmarried, if you're not dealing with somebody, your main focus is going to be on the Lord. Because, you know, as being a man, you're dealing with a woman, especially the woman of these days, they always want to do something. Let's go here. Let's go there. So then you're going to have to use the spirit and basically manage your time. And we understand that the Lord is supposed to be first over everything. Like the scripture say, he that loveth anything more than the Lord is not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. Verse 33. And that includes your children over your children as well. Verse 33. But he that is merry care for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. Because like I said, for the most part, the women are conformed. They're the weaker vessels. So Satan loves to use them. Just like the serpent went straight to Eve. He didn't go straight to Adam. He went to Eve. And then Adam was persuaded through Eve. And we know Adam was Jehovah shot during that generation. He fell because of that. And then ultimately came back King Solomon. Fell when he got older allowing his woman to worship the idols and ultimately indulging in it as well. And then we know he came back as Yahweh Shah, who did it perfect. Yahweh Shah didn't deal with women. That's why the scripture says it was written a full time for our learning. So we got to keep these things in mind while we're maneuvering through these perilous times to come. That's why you got to keep Isaiah 33 and 6 in your mind. It says, In wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of thy time. And strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. The wisdom of these scriptures, we got to keep these things rooted in our minds because when Satan tries to tempt us, we can be able to fight against him. Just like when he tried to tempt Yahweh Shah, when Yahweh Shah was fasting in Matthew, the, um, the fourth chapter. I'm going to go from there to Job chapter 33 and verse 15. It reads, In a dream and a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men and slumbering upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and setteth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from a man. From man. So yeah, the Lord seals your instruction while you're in deep sleep. So like I said, you think that you're going to wake up and do this, but the Lord can change that overnight that's why you can't be prideful that's why we got to say lord's will <laughs> like i said as we know as far as if you're dealing with women you know that their minds are very fickle one day she can be acting as if she head over heels in love with you but then the next day she's a completely different person that's because the lord sealed the instruction in her mind and ultimately, he allows Satan to use her to tempt you. And that's what you got to understand, that Satan wants you to go off. He wants, especially the, the person, people that serve in the Lord. Luke chapter 22 and verse 31. And that's the beauty because we have a more sure word of prophecy. We understand these scriptures better than we did in our past generation because we can clearly see it. Like it says, like I said, we got a more sure word of prophecy. Luke 22 and verse 31, it says, it says, and the Lord says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan have desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. So yeah, Satan wants to sift the elect. So he allows his spirits to hop on these people, the people in this world. 
But the elect is not going to be sifted, though. We understand that. It says, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. And that's what we do. We exalt one another. Of course, we go through trials and tribulations. That's why we got to, you know, exalt one another, keep each other, push each other to continue in the faith. Of course, we all got to work our own salvation with fear and trembling, but charity and ultimately the brotherhood is part of the ministry. But the point is, like I said, that ultimately the point was made that if a woman leaves you or a man leaves you, ultimately that was in the will of the Lord. That made you, but you still got to continue to do what you got to do. And we got to remember that we're under the curses anyway. So whether you believe it or not, we're under these curses. So for the, you know, the men that had baby moms and, you know, ch mothers of their children, etc. Deuteronomy 28 and 56, it says, the tender and delicate woman, this is one of the curses, because the curses started verse 15 on down. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not venture to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eyes should be evil towards the husband of her bosom. Because you got to understand, dealing with these women, Eventually, that evil eye may kick in on them. And I heard multiple stories of, I, I didn't literally spoken with women and asked them, like women that have children, and they have told me that for some reason, when they got pregnant by their baby father, they didn't look at them the same for some reason. Of course, they don't understand, but I, you know, us in this truth, we understand that it's part of the curses. So once they got pregnant, for some reason, that evil eye got on them and that spirit of, you know, breaking up the family, which these devils push, hopped on them. So that's the risk that, that that's taken when, you know, dealing with these women. Now you got to worry about having a child out here and not being able to be in that child's life. And when we're in the kingdom, we're not going to have to worry about that. We're not going to have to worry about harm coming unto our children or we're not going to have to worry about our women having that evil eye. But as of right now, we're in captivity. This is not our rest. So we shouldn't be focused on trying to build big, happy families in this world anyway. People trying to make this kingdom their comfort zone. But it's not because it's always going to be that void. You're always going to be lacking something. And if you making it and if you are comfortable in this kingdom, it's ultimately because the love of the father is not in you. Because like it says in James 4 and 4, to be a friendship of this world is enmity with Yahweh Hashem Yahusha. Because this world ultimately pushes wickedness. So like I said, yeah, the Lord may may have mercy on you and allow you to have a good situation, an okay situation, but you got to keep in mind that this is not it. <laughs> this is not the kingdom. And sometimes you, you need, some people need the Lord to kick these women out of their life because like I said some of these women could be a complete demon but due to the fact that you've been dealing with her you got that love for her, it's hard for you to cut her off so like it says the Lord they decide to leave you know the Lord allowed to put that Satan to put that spirit on that demon and be like you know what I'm out of here and ultimately you have peace yeah you might be a little heavy in the spirit but you deep down know that you needed that But I'm going to read 28 and 56. Like I said, I heard multiple women say that they know a woman that clearly stated that they looked at their 
the, the father their child different once they got pregnant or after they had the baby. It says, the tender and delicate woman among you, which would not venture to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eyes should be evil towards the husband of her bosom and towards her son and towards her daughter. And we can see countless articles. I see one just about every day about a woman either leaving her child behind to go out of town to go meet up with another man that's not the father, of course, or a woman maybe putting her baby. I think I just seen one recently again putting the baby her two children in the oven and sending the pictures to the the father of the children in the midst of doing it. It says, and towards her young ones that come out from between her feet and towards her children which she should bear. But that's the point right there. And like we understand that Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, it says there's no new thing under the sun. So these things are going to happen again, especially like I said, during the perilous times to come, Jacob's trouble is right around the corner. So for you know the men that that that's that's seeking that that want you know woman, we understand that eventually that time is going to come, and it's going to be fully implemented in the kingdom of heaven. But we understand that before that happens, when all hell breaks loose, these women are going to be seeking a man. They're going to be seeking. A man, so you you gonna be having to tell them whether you want to choose them or not, because when all hell breaks loose, the Lord is only gonna be dealing with the elect and more so the men. And this is when these scripture, this scripture gonna kick in Isaiah four and one, and then that day seven women, and we know seven means completion. It can be more or less shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. So, yeah, when all hell is breaking loose, these women are going to get in order. They're not going to be in that feminist mindset that ultimately brainwashed them into destroying themselves. And I've seen a couple videos as of right now. Women are complaining about having to be on a long alone be alone ultimately stating that it's hard harder to do things on their own because ultimately these de this devil is coming down with great wrath and ultimately the lord is taking away that left hand power from eve and the serpent even the serpent work together you know as far as in eating that fruit but the lord is taking that power away and ultimately righteousness is starting to flourish and it's going to continue to flourish all the way up until the kingdom of heaven. And then in the kingdom of heaven, there will be no more wickedness. But like I always say, we got to wait for these prophecies to come to pass. And like I always say as well, as the scriptures say, don't take the mark of the beast, which is the RFID microchip, that a lot of these people are going to be persuaded into taking and ultimately lead them to being destroyed. And a lot of these women, men, that's dealing with these women that's in that's basically in love and going to choose them over the Lord. When the Lord was basically putting allowing the spirit to be put on them to leave that man because of the fact of the matter is that they were a demon, but the, some men, you know, they choose to the follow and, and chase the woman. And like it says in Sirach 25 and 24, uh, the woman became the beginning of sin and through her we all die. They're going to follow behind her right to their destruction. But like the scriptures say, the sinner will be taken by her. The elect is not going to be taken. The man, the Lord has put the, the spirit on the elect man to show themselves men. And we understand the order. That's written in 1 Corinthians 11, starting in the third chapter. The heavenly father, Yahweh, his son, Yahweh Shai, men, then women, then children. You shouldn't be guided by your woman. Your woman is supposed to be guided by you. But we understand in this kingdom that they turn things upside down and around. So women are allowed to leave whenever they choose. That's why they have that disrespectful, dis disobedient mindset, especially here in the West, because they're allowed to be that way because they get the benefits of the society. 
they choose the government to be their husband and they feel like they could just cast their mind to the side. And that's ultimately fulfilling the binding of the strong man um, parable in Mark, the third chapter in the 27th verse, I believe. But like I said, the whole point of this lesson is that why that person left you was ultimately it was the will of the Lord. And you should take that time that you have from having to deal with a person or, or dealing with a person and use it towards serving the Lord, which you should have been doing that anyway before that happened. But sometimes that has to happen. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go from I'm gonna I'm gonna grab the last couple of scriptures. Cause we gotta keep these scriptures in mind. Like I said, you put people like to put their their relationships above the relationship of the Lord. But don't forget these scriptures was written at four time for our learning. Luke chapter 17 and verse 32. It's a small scripture, but it hits hard. Remember Lot's wife. Because we got to understand that Lot's wife was always was with him all the way up until the destruction. So just like some of, some of our women, they might be with us, but it could be to the point that as soon as destruction comes, that, or when it comes to that point when the mark of the beast is made mandatory, a lot of them going to end up turning on you. So it's better that, you, that they leave now. I mean, I would rather them leave early before getting all the way to that point at the last minute. Like Lot's wife did, she looked back and ultimately turned into a pillar of salt. And the Lord ultimately shows in the scriptures that you got to choose him, choose Yahweh Shem Yahweh over the people of this world. And I say people of this world because I'm talking about the ones that can't receive the truth. And ultimately, the Lord want to see if the man, if you as a man, that he chosen you to be a soldier, like it's written in 2 Timothy, the, um, I think it's 2 Timothy, the second chapter. If he chose you to be a man, you got to to be to be a soldier. You got to, you got to be up to the task. So sometimes he might take people and then they ain't just, you know, just your woman. It could be your children. Because we got to remember Job, the book of Job, the first and, you know, the second chapter. He can end up causing you to be, allowing you to become seriously ill. But like I said, everything is in the will of the Lord. Ezekiel 24, and I'm going to finish off in this, these scriptures, chapter, verse 15. It says, also the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away from thee the desire of thine eyes with a stroke. And that's talking about his woman. The Lord is going to take take, take want to take Ezekiel's woman away. Yet neither shall thy mourn nor weep, neither shall thy tears run down. So when certain situations happen, you know, a person, like I said, might woman might lead him <laughs> right before camp, and he, he he really his spirit really loved that woman. You got to keep these scriptures in mind. The Lord basically said he was going to take away Ezekiel's woman with a stroke, basically kill her. Forbear to cry, make no mourning. For the dead, bind the tire of thy head upon thee, and put on thy shoes upon thy feet, and cover not thy lips, and eat not the bread of men. So I spake unto the people in the morning, and at even my wife died, and I did in the morning as I was commanded. So that's what we supposed to be doing. We got to be in that same mindset, especially us, like I said, serving the Lord. We can't let the, the cares of this world distract us and knock us off a path of Toward seeking the kingdom of heaven, keeping our eyes on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. We gotta keep in mind that, you know, that's that um that chapter in Matthew the 14th chapter talking about how Apostle Peter stepped on that water and his and he was looking at Yahweh Shah and due to the waves and you know how the how the sea was going, he started to sink because that you can liken those waves and how the wind was blowing to the cares of this world. And he started to sink because he started to focus on the cares of this world and took his eyes off Yahweh Shah. But he called on Yahweh Shah and said, save him. And that's what we got to do. Call on Yahweh Shah. 
in the time of trouble. Because calling on Jesus Christ, Allah, what, anything else is going to lead you to sink. And like I, like I said at camp the other day, that that proves that Peter was a part of the elect. Because like the scriptures also say, a righteous man falls seven times, but he get back up. So Peter was saved by the Lord. But the Lord is going to allow a lot of people to drown because they're not part of the elect. And that can include the woman you may have been dealing with or a lot of these people in the world, your loved ones, your co-workers, etc. And who knows, through the Spirit, like I said, the Lord could be testing you. The Lord can make that person that you cared about leave. And then in the end, they, they come back. But like it says, how can, like that first scripture I just brought up for hours 20 and 24, how can a man then understand his own way? You don't know why the Lord put the spirit on that person to leave you. You don't understand your own way. But we got to understand it. We got to continue to do this work. That's our main focus. <sighs> well, Lord willing, that was edifying. Shalom.